Hi guys, welcome to the next lesson on human evolution. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the major trends in hominin evolution, particularly focusing on the genus Australopithecus, and then we're going to move into the genus Homo, and we're going to look at the structural, functional, and cognitive changes as a consequence of cultural evolution and biological evolution. So this is an overall summary of how humans, or the time scale of humans and their upright walking ancestors existed. So it began with many, many millions of years ago, this genus here. Then we moved into what's commonly classified on VCAR exams, Australopithecus genus, which were upright, upright walking ancestors. They were a lot hairier, they, their skulls were larger, they had bigger brow ridges, their forearm magnum was more posterior, towards the skull, then they had this genus here, Paranthropus, and now we have the Homo genus. So these are the ones that are most closely related to humans, as you can see Homo sapiens is here. The ones that are key are Homo erectus, Homo neanderthals, Homo habilis. They're key in the hominin story, but there are other features of these particular others here that are also important. So here's another diagram just showing or demonstrating the evolution of humans. So humans originated from the great apes, and the genus that we're going to be following or looking at particularly is Australopithecus, which formed a Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthals, and then Homo sapiens. We can see Homo sapiens are the most superior, or they are the current genus or current genus of hominins that exist. Before that, Homo neanderthals existed, and they no longer exist anymore. And before that, it was Heidelbergensis and Homo erectus. And then we have, of course, Homo habilis as the earliest form of the genus Homo, and then Australopithecines before that. So let's go and define some key terms. So biological evolution, first of all, that's the process in which characteristic organism, organism change over time, over successive generations, and that's usually by genetic variation and natural selection, which we've discussed in detail. So, for example, physical traits like skin colour and maybe biochemical traits like the blood types, they will change through biological evolution. You can see here the organisms have been are biologically evolving because they are being selected for, because this phenotype is more favourable than this phenotype here for particular environments. There will be environments in which the gorilla's phenotype is selected for over the humans. So you can see this is an example of biological evolution. Cultural evolution, however, describes cultural change, and that is transmitted not genetically, but through social interactions through human societies. So things like where we uh, express art, where we have song and dance, where we have rituals, those are examples of cultural evolution. So we learn from others, it's not genetic, and they help expand a particular aspect of your culture or way of doing things. So, as a result of humans increasing their brain volume, their ability to plan and use abstract thinking, rituals and symbolisms was increased, so therefore cultural evolution increased as the homo genus evolved or was biologically selected for. So, being able to be more culturally uh, evolved was a result of uh, large development in cognitive skills, and that is reflected in, so the, these, these changes in, um, in biological anatomy, meaning larger brain size, enabled more cognitive skills to be done, and behavioural changes, so cultural evolution, such as making using fire, cooperating in groups, burying a dead and having rituals, the use of art, language, mathematics and music perhaps, and increased use of tools and technology to help us do tasks easier and more efficiently. So examples of cultural evolution, we've got art, you can see early paintings of art that was done in uh, various caves. There are Saharan Africa, there are also many of them from indigenous Australian cultures, cave paintings, symbolising cultural evolution. We also have technological evolution, so technological evolution is more about using tools to describe how we can more effectively do a job. So now in the modern day we have science and that uses various research methods to discover what tools are the most appropriate to do a job. So for example, a computer is more efficient at calculating mathematical sums than a human will be because they can complete that far quicker and more accurately and they do not need to require sleep. So 
science develops technology which enables us to do our jobs better, creating machines. The interaction between science and cultural evolution technology is met in this diagram here. So here are in a comparison between biological and cultural evolution. We can see the main features are cultural evolution is not transmitted genetically, whereas biological is, and cultural is changes to the society, the structure of the society, or the particular ways they communicate with one another, whereas biological is specifically about natural selection and the change in that organism, and that's a slow transmission, and it occurs genetically. So these are the key ideas. Evolution of hominins. So understanding what humans began first, and then cultural, biological, technical evolution, how that fits into the picture of human evolution. These are the key ideas that you should be able to now complete, where you should be able to define behavioral, biological, and technological evolution, or cultural evolution, and describe the importance of these types of evolutions and how they interplay with the success of the human race. Thanks for watching.